Over the past hundred years, our food supply has greatly improved through traditional plant breeding. Now we're beginning to reap the first fruits of the genetically modified harvest. Genetic engineering is moving fast and many people find it hard to decide whether genetically modified plants are a good thing or a bad thing. Novel food regulations require GM food and all other foods new to the market to go through extensive safety testing procedures to make sure they do not contain substances that might cause toxic or allergic reactions. In some tests, thousands of samples are analyzed and compared based on their molecular and genetic composition. Other tests make use of atomic rather than molecular comparisons between GM and non-GM food. This way it's possible to see to what extent foods vary in their composition. Insect-resistant and weed-spray-tolerant crops, for example, have been approved this way to make food for us to eat. If one was just to look at the issue as purely a food safety issue and nothing else, we have reason to be far more concerned about many other things that are in our food than about uh, genetically modified food as, as such. But again, the, the question of GM food has become much wider than one purely of food safety. It has become an environmental issue and a social issue and a political issue. It inevitably has been linked to uh, concerns about or against globalization uh, and really has become a very much a multi-factored issue. Environmentalists have three main concerns. That GM crops will create superbugs and superweeds or reduce biodiversity, but above all they're worried about the irreversibility of GM crop releases. Our concern is basically just the release of genetically modified organisms into the environment. We are not opposed to using genetic engineering in contained um, facilities, and that's a different story. In the open environment, pollen from transgenic crops could pollinate another related plant. If they cross with their wild relatives, there could be the danger of creating superweeds resistant to herbicides. And if they cross with non-GM crops on organic farms, for example, the farmers couldn't guarantee the non-GM origin of their food product. The first commercial products of genetic engineering were plants resistant to pests and weed killers. It's mainly the farmers that reap the benefits. Now, researchers in Europe and many other parts of the world are developing new products designed to be of direct benefit to the consumer. Many of these research advances will be used in the developed world where there are potentially large enough markets for the new products. For developing countries, priorities depend on local circumstances and are often a question of need rather than choice. Areas under active research include plants that are resistant to high salt content in the soil or to drought. Great efforts are going into creating foods designed to be positively good for you. For example, tests are underway on a GM rice designed to increase levels of vitamin A in the human body. One problem for decision makers is that there are no agreed international standards for assessing the risks of GM crops and GM food. Different countries base their judgments on different sets of questions, and not all countries have access to good testing facilities. In North America, decisions are based primarily on scientific judgments about safety. This approach means GM crop developments are moving ahead quite fast, but if something goes wrong, the guilty parties could be sued. Europe's precautionary principle tries to avoid unexpected consequences. It allows decision makers to proceed cautiously with GM crops. Their decisions are based on social considerations as well as the available scientific evidence. Without an international agreement on standards, food producers face real problems in developing and selling GM products to countries in other parts of the world. 
And even if international standards could be agreed on, there's no mechanism to enforce them. This is now the challenge for the decision makers.